What's up guys, today I'm going to show you how to replace the logic board on your 2010 MacBook Air. Um, I've gotten started already just by removing a couple of the outside screws. So this can apply also to I believe the 2011 and 12 models um, and possibly even 2009. I will confirm in the description. I'll let you guys know specifically which models this applies to. Also in the description I will be leaving a link for all the tools I used um, if you guys need to purchase your own. So first we're going to remove all the outside casing screws. Um, the ones on the side and the bottom and this side here are all the same size. The two here will be longer. And uh, Let's see, I don't think I got this one enough. This is a special pentalobe screw uh, made by Apple. And there goes the bottom casing. We're going to set that aside. First of all, we're going to disconnect the battery. Just pull down on this tab this way. And that means the battery is disconnected. Um, next we're going to do the remove the SSD and to do that uh, there's one screw right here I'm missing that screw but essentially you just unscrew that peel that up a little bit and then pull it out there's the SSD so you can also use this video to help you guys um, change your SSD also this is a Wi-Fi chip right here we're going to use some uh, this tool that's like a basically it's like uh, tweezers and just take off the two antenna connectors first and then there's also another screw it's very similar to the uh, solid state drive you unscrew it right there and then you peel it right out next of all we're going to gonna need a special I believe it's a um, T5 screw, but again, I will reconfirm all these screws um, in the description. I'll leave links. So if you guys don't have the specific screwdriver, I was able to find a flathead that would work just fine in these. So we're going to remove the uh, motherboard or logic board screws first. So to identify the logic board screws, you'll see a ring around, they're black screws first of all, but you'll see a ring around the screws um, on the logic board, and that'll indicate those are the ones holding it into place. You can see there's two right here on the left side, two more right here moving over. One right here. And then we're going to remove this connector. This is the I.O. board on the left side, connecting it to the logic board for the charging and things like that. It just peels right up. Um, and then next we're going to remove the fan. <clears throat> so the fan will have different um, length screws, so make sure you keep track of that. Two screws on the top here. And then we're going to remove this connector. It just comes straight out. That goes to the I.O. board. And then right underneath it we have one more connector for the, I mean one more screw for the fan. Then we're going to remove our fan right here. There's a, t there's a uh, plastic piece, you just flip it up. And then the fan cable is free to come out right there. One more screw holding in the logic board right here. And then right here in the corner right uh, under the hinge, there's also one more screw holding in the logic board. And that one is also a special size, so we're going to set that one 
in a different location. Now you can see our logic board is loose. Uh, we're going to also remove the display cable. So flip this up and then the cable is free to pop out. And then last we're going to remove this speaker. That's just going to help us get some extra room. And then this cable, it just pops straight up. There you go. The speaker is held in by some adhesive. So, adhesive right there. And then the logic board. Let's see. Um, also remove the keyboard cable. Sorry guys. Flip that connector up. And then it's free to come out now. Route these antenna cables down. And there you go, that is the removal of the logic board. Now I'm gonna reinstall a new one. So here is my new logic board part. Um, this is actually going to be an upgrade from the original. And this person, I bought this on eBay. So um, it's it's been used previously or it's been salvaged from a different one. Uh, the seller, I guess, gave me the connector as well as the fan. But um, this is a 2.16 gigahertz, whereas uh, the one I had taken out was a 1.86. And um, the one I had originally also the one I the one I originally replaced was a water damaged um, board. And the one I'm replacing today is because I got one replacement on eBay and the guy said he tested it, but he didn't test it. Um, so it was a broken logic board he sent me. And so I'm back here doing this all over again with another board from eBay. Um, but you know, that's the cheapest place to get these. And I'm not trying to pay a fortune just to fix this laptop up. All right, so I've got my new logic board. Um, I've just placed it in. Uh, I'm not gonna take it back out because I've already got one of the screws in and my SD card has been acting up twice now. But I mean, pretty much you just drop it in and um, screw it back together. That's pretty much it. I've went ahead and put this screw in. Um, I also was showing off originally this screw magnetizer, um, screwdriver magnetizer. So you could demagnetize your screwdriver. Well, I guess the demagnetize didn't really work that well. But what I use it mainly for is magnet magnetizing the screwdriver. You just put it in there, wiggle it a couple times, and then you can see the screw gets stuck to the screwdriver, and then it makes it so much easier to screw things into place. There we go. So just put all the logic board screws back into place. Um, I guess really no particular order would really matter, but um, just put those into place first. Actually, I'm going to get this keyboard cable into place first because I know I usually have a, some trouble doing this. So with some plier, I mean some uh, tweezers, be very gentle because these cables are very fragile. I'm just going to take it and try to push it in the bottom. And once it's in, you flip the connector down to lock it. I'm just going to see if it'll go in any more. There it goes, locked into place. So I'm going to put the fan back into place. Make sure you connect that fan cable right here. There, push it down just like the keyboard cable we had. Then we're gonna secure the bottom screw of the fan. 
All right, so just replace the screws in the reverse order of what we started off with. There you go, one screw goes there, and then the shorter connector goes to the first one. Be very gentle, these are made out of very thin pieces of metal, so it's very easy to bend one of these connectors and then, you know, be unable to get it back into place. All right, we've got the next connector in there. They're both tight. We're gonna drop our SSD in. One screw goes right there. Make sure we reconnect our speaker cable. Just snaps into place. Our display connector slides right in. And then we take our metal piece here lock it into place, it's got some adhesive to hold it in. Take our battery, slide it into place, and we're good to go. I'm gonna put the cover back on. Remember the two screws on top are the long ones, and then the rest of them um, go on the sides. So everything is working here, you could see um, well, you can't see that closely, but it's recognizing 2.13 gigahertz um, at four gigs of RAM. So it's got the new logic board in place, working, and that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, guys. As always, make sure you stay subscribed to my channel. Hit that thumbs up button if you found this video helpful. Links in the description for the tools if uh, you guys need anything. And uh, make sure you subscribe to my channel to get more videos, and I will see you guys in the next one.